everyone and welcome to this first event of our PTOP program, it's the first event in this semester. Um, let me just spend a few words to, to explain to those of you who don't know uh, what PTOP is. So uh, PTOP is the post-doc teaching opportunity program and the idea of this program is to provide an opportunity for postdoc and visiting scholar to practice and to um, experience uh, some practice their teaching skills. So this is the idea of the programs. Since uh, many of us uh, don't have opportunities to teach uh, here because they are most of the time uh, in their labs, or just because they, I mean, we are here for like a certain amount of uh, time and uh, we don't have uh, the opportunity to practice uh, and so the idea is to provide this opportunity. Um, the interesting thing uh, is also that uh, we are actually hiring. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, it means that we are looking for people who want to volunteer and uh, who want to be part of our uh, board members. So, because uh, a few people, let's say historical members, are leaving and so we are now looking for someone new who wants to um, to join uh, this board, which means, uh, I mean, it's not something so, uh, I mean, it means just to, to help in organizing the meetings. We usually have uh, uh, four or five meetings uh, every semester, it depends, uh, but this is uh, the number of meetings uh, we usually have. Um, so if someone uh, is interested, so ju just let me know after, after the lecture and we can uh, discuss it and uh, I mean everyone is uh, more than welcome uh, in that. Um, so I'm very glad today to introduce uh, our speakers uh, that are uh, Karin Gremol and Azizul Moksud and they will uh, explain us how to become an excellent teacher and they will, they will uh, bring their experience uh, both in uh, um, real teaching and online teaching. So um, I also would like just to tell you that we have some coffee, so if you like, uh, please uh, help yourself. And uh, so Karin and Azizul, I leave you the floor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. So good afternoon everyone and welcome to my lecture. <laughs> I am Azizul Moksu, a visiting professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And I am also a co-chair of PTOP, uh, which is just introduced by uh, Maria. And I, when I became the co-chair of PTOP, I was thinking to give one lecture about this topic. So it is very great pleasure for me to talk about this. And at first I would like to thank all of you for attending to this lecture. And the topic of this lecture is very interesting, like how to become an excellent teacher. It's not a common topic. And at the end of this lecture, you will come to know some of the tips how to become a good teacher or excellent teacher in university level. So basically, I will share my own experience. I have like more than 15 years of teaching experience in the university level, in UC Berkeley, and also in uh, Yamaguchi University, Japan and also in Saga University of Japan and Saga University of Engineering and Technology in Bangladesh and also in University of Bahar, Malaysia. So I have some different um, like uh, cultural places to teach and there are many cultural differences of course in North America and Asia and even Asian countries they have different um, like uh, things to do or to not. So I will share those things and I have I, so far, I have been awarded the excellent teacher award five times, and also this presentation award four times. So, what other things that made me to get this uh, award? So, I will share those tips to you. So, this is some of the photos of my achievements. So, before going to my main lecture, what is very much important for uh, like uh, good teacher or excellent teacher is the like effective presentation or effective lecture. 
So it is nothing but the combination of two things. One is your letters have to be like intellectual, or that is logical, and number two is it has to be like emotional. So these two things must be inside your lecture. This is very important. And to teach, and I mean, when you talk in front of the students, or like, you are like a performer. So like one singer, when he lies in the stage, so this is the like similar thing. As a teacher, when you teach in front of others, when you are on the stage, you are a live performer. So you have to make like something attractive so that the students can attract to your lecture, so that the students can listen to your lecture. And for that reason, to achieve that goal, your lecture has to be both logical and emotional. So logical means when you select your topic, it has some good logic, like when you say something specific topic, you have to have like good introduction, you have to have like good background, or what is the objective of today's lecture, and also like some conclusion that you wrap up the things like what you wanted to achieve and what you have finally got it. So this is very important for the listeners or the, I would say the students who are enjoying your lecture. And the emotional part is very important because without this part, it cannot be like effective lecture or effective presentation. And that is the thing like we have to edit by practice, like very simple, like what would be your body language during the lectures? Like what would be your voice? What would be the volume of your voice? Okay, what will be your eye contact? These all are the things that makes your effective presentation or effective lecture. So it is not so easy. Like when you give a lecture in the classroom, so there are many students. Okay? So you have to attract their attention or you have to motivate them so that they can listen to you. So you have to have your something special that makes them all the way, all the students throughout the time to listen to you carefully. So you have to have those parts in the emotional section of your presentation. And here are some like 10 general rules for effective lecture. Okay. So number one is keep the number of slides or content as small as possible. So if you have of course slides or visual aids or your contents, so try to make as simple as possible. Because in the research we have found that so if there are a lot of information in one slides, many students cannot gather all the things. They may some of them can do, but many of them cannot. So you have to be very selective which one is important, which should you include in, in your slide. And do not write a lot of text on slide, never more than eight lines. This is also very general and good. When you make any slide for the lecture, for the students, so try to make it as small as possible, like maximum eight lines in one slide. Okay? And Sometimes it is also very important not to write full sentence, too many texts, that is boring. So try to write like keywords or key phrases and explain to the students. That will make more uh, like attractive to the students, they will listen to you carefully. And make it simple. I always believe like combination of traditional way, like using a blackboard and also like whiteboard plus the visual page is the best way. Only the PowerPoint slide sometimes is not good. So yes, this is the combination when sometimes you use the blackboard, you draw some figure to explain them, and you just make them like interactive to ask them questions and to like uh, discuss some points with them. That will, these type of things make them more uh, attractive and motivated motivation and of course 
make eye contact with your students. This is very important for effective teachers. For it, uh, it is very important. So if you just keep nature gazing uh, surroundings, you they will not listen. It will be like some after some time they will be bored. So try to maintain that the traditional zigzag sign eye contact. Like if I look at the last student, then this corner last student, and in front and in front. So like Z. Okay. This is very important for the effective lecture or effective uh, presentations. And number six, prepare your lecture according to your syllabus. So every university or every place and department they have some goal, they have some curriculum. And you have to prepare your syllabus to achieve that. Okay. So when you do that, you will have some objective of the topic, like what you will teach. So I will say this, uh, discuss it in uh, detail later. And it is always very good to make sure to give handouts to the students. Nowadays it is very easy, you can upload in the like in Sibarjo, upload in B course, and students can go. Uh, through the like uh, lecture notes there, so this is very important for the students because in during the lecture it is not possible to uh, get all the knowledge for the students. All the students, <coughs> some can do, but most of them cannot. So they can like cover after going back to uh, their home, they can read. So this is very important to share your lecture notes or some handouts or some reference or in the textbook chapters with the students what you are teaching because this like 50 minutes or 90 minutes is not enough for all the students to get what you are wanting to share or teach and of course today I'm not using but using is a pointer or marker okay but do not move it too fast sometimes it makes some irritation to the some of the students so use of course, some pointer or marker to give in the explanation. That will also attract the students to keep them motivated and keep attention to your lecture. And of course, do not use too much color in one slide. And number 10, this is very important. Arrive to the classroom early. Be prepared to start on time. Okay. It will depend to culture to culture, like in the country to country. In Berkeley, the class is just like 10 years late. <laughs> but in Japan, you never talk like this. You have to come to the lecture room maybe five minutes earlier and start your class just on time. Okay, Not one minute or 50 seconds earlier. And you have to finish your class on time. So these are very important. If you make late in your class to go to the lecture room, the students will have some impression about you that you are not serious, okay? And they will just uh, not so attentive or they will not be as motivated as you are, like if you have uh, time to get over them. So these are the key general rules for to become an effective teacher or professor. And what we have to do, like for each lecture, you have to prepare your lecture or presentation very carefully. So for example like 50 minutes class you have to give time to prepare the, your lectures for you know, two hours or three hours. Okay. This is very okay, uh, important thing. You have to have enough materials not only to show them but on your head to discuss and you have to have the confidence to discuss with the students. Okay. If someone asks any question, you have to answer that question. You have to prepare at least what you are teaching and the subject matter. You have to have enough knowledge. So for that reason, you have to have prepare your lecture and organize the content. That is the logical section for the intellectual part of your effective presentation. So you have to organize the content. You have to prepare the story. How and what will be the like flow of your story? What will be the introduction or background? And what is the topic? What is the uh, 
things like it will make them more attractive and more attentive to uh, understand the things. And then, of course, nowadays, like like delivering your presentation, you can practice beforehand, or of, you can use the visual aids like I'm using PowerPoint and dealing with my process. When you first come to the teaching career, when you first stand on the stage in front of like for example if you are on 100 students it is look like very uh, I mean, frightening so this is look like something uh, like public speaking in front you are talking in front of many people and which we never learn in our school life or in the university so the, who are in the uh, initial stages of your teaching career you will find that it, to talk in front of many people or in, on the top of the stage is very much frightening, hugely nervous. So you have to deal with that. Because if the students understand that you are nervous, they will not bother you. <laughs> so be careful about that. So you have to practice and get at that, uh, how to deal with the nervousness. So what will be the top qualities of an excellent teacher from so far on my uh, discussion? Number one is the dedication. Okay. Number two is engaging students in learning. Number three, your kind personality. And number four, like focused on your job. Number five is effective discipline skills. And finally, knowledge. So I will discuss detail on the one of these qualities. The first and most important thing in teaching. Uh, or teaching or academic line is the dedication. So what does it mean? Like, I always like this story like teaching. <laughs> I'm not in it for the income. I am in, I am in it for the outcome. So this is the uh, best explanation of teaching jobs because when you graduated in the university like you got PhD, so if you go to the academic line and your friend go to the for example, I'm a civil engineer, I'm going to the university and you go to the some engineering firm. So you get almost two times of my salary. So <laughs> this is very much common because they will get a lot of bonus and everything. But this teaching is something like passion. Okay? So you have to be have that passion to become excellent teacher or good teacher. So when you enjoy your teaching, you will not look for your money or any other things. So number one, you have to be passionate about the teaching. This is very much interesting. Like after giving, giving a good lecture, you will do something very much uh, like uh, relaxing, and you will never be tired when you see the like some faces of the students who are listening to you carefully. So this is really. Uh, you cannot measure it with the money, okay? So this is something uh, very much uh, a special thing. So become a teacher is always very much, uh, very much um, good thing. And you have to be passionate for that, for teaching. And you have to love to teach, okay? So to love to teach means like you have to have uh, like um, you have to have passion to. If somebody, or some students cannot understand, in one time you have to teach him twice, thrice. Okay, so you have to have very much a, like cool and calm and easy to teach them. And at the same time, you have to have love to learn. Okay, because uh, especially in the field of technology, it is changing very much, very fast. Okay. So we have to have learned the things, the new technologies from the journals, for example, from the uh, like good international conferences, all this going on. And of course, you have to have your own research, and you will share those research with the students. For example, in Japan, when we teach, like especially in graduate level, like fifty percent of our syllabus somehow related to our research. Research outcome. So, what we have already published or going on doing research, we have to share with the students. So, it is very much important to have to have like update of the current world, what is going on in the technology of the 
persistence. So we have to learn if we are do if we do not love to study, it is better not to go to the teaching line. Okay? Because if you go to the teaching line, you have to have study to do everything. So uh, my father is a university professor, he is a civil engineer also. And my mother is also a civil uh, professor in the university. And my elder brother, elder sisters, all of them are professors. So if you go to my house, you can see only books, some <laughs> things, no other things. So this is the thing, like if you go to the teaching line, you have to have the one thing, you have to read, read the book and everything. And yeah, if, teaching is like if you live some simple life, okay, peaceful life. So if you go to the like uh, some, for example, my own profession, uh, if someone go to the uh, like uh, in industry or something. They will get money, but they will have to have a lot of stress every day. So teaching is some, in, you can manage your time, your own time, okay? So you can go a little bit, uh, like play the book, the office time, <coughs> and also you can manage the other things. And engaging the students in learning. A great teacher is very engaging and holds the attention of the students in the discussions. So when you go to the university teaching so this is the most difficult thing to get the attention or motivate all the students throughout your lecture time sometimes some of the students initially they will pay good attention but they will be bored or they try to play with you uh, with our uh, smartphones or try to talk with his uh, partners or next students so how to deal with that? Number one, try to make interactive lessons or interactive lectures. You will ask questions. Okay, what do you think? Can you share what is your thoughts? Okay, if, if you see someone is talking in the back, some students point him. Okay, what, what do you think about this topic? Have you understood? Like, try to talk with him, interact with him. And of course, we are human beings, so only talking sometimes is not um, good. Right? So, try to use some videos or visuals and discussion time among the partners. Like, what I did uh, mostly, like, if I have some time during the class and I found that most of the students are not enjoying much, then I just make them look like, can you share your thoughts with your partners? and. You also do that similar thing, and then you inform me. So they just recharge about this. Okay? They they will not bore anymore. So this is very much the important is to how to make motivate. Number one, interact. Okay, to ask questions. And then, yes, you have to have caring and kind personality. A combination of kindness and and skill of management is very important. So kindness does not mean that you are a like weak administrator okay so you have to be kind to the students but at the same time you have some strict rule about the academic um, achievements or for example how to evaluate them okay and how to um, like uh, take the examination for example you do not allow anyone to talk with his friends during the exam so these are very important things. So you have to be very much uh, careful about this combination. Like you have to be both kind at the same time. You have to be strict in management. And some of the tips is that don't be angry so quick because students are uh, different kinds and different. Um, they came from different nationalities or something. So they have some. I mean, different way to deal with. So the first and important tip is to not be angry so quickly with any students, okay? With their behavior or something. And be patient, explain more and more than one time or two times. So there is one like a proverb that if you are a good student, you cannot be a good teacher. What does it mean? Like good students always thought that all the students 
his, his level. So sometimes many small things are which is also important which cannot be understood by other students. They just have heard that thing. So it is very important that do not think like that. Okay, some students, all the students are not the same. So you have to be very really much patient. So if like if a simple topic, some students can understand easily, some cannot. So you have to be patient to explain that more than one time or two times. So this is the very important for teaching class. And we are objectives for the lessons. A great teacher establishes we are objective for each lesson and works to meet those specific of objectives during each class. So this is also very important. So what I made like in the first. So in every lecture, every lecture, at first he will inform the topic, subject topic what we are going to talk and what is the objective of that day. Okay. So if you say in short at the beginning their mindset will be good. They will be pretty much uh, like focused on what, what they are going to take from you. And at the end, you will, when you wrap up the things, you will again inform them, remind them what are you, what was the objective and what you have achieved during the lecture of that day. So this is very important. Like today's lecture at the beginning, I said today you will get uh, some tips for how to become an excellent teacher. So all of your mind or focus to get some tips. Okay. So this is one way how you give a clear message, clear objective to all the students. And how to do that? Like make syllabus according to your time and style of lecture. Okay. So. Like when you make lecture, uh, like syllabus at the starting of the semester or something. So you will make those topics according to your style. If you are interactive, then you cannot cover a lot of things in one class. But you are just one way, you can deliver, which is not good. Then you can cover a lot of things. So you have to make your own style of teaching according to your time and according to your syllabus goal or curriculum goal of your university. And inform the students about the lecture topic at the beginning, what I already said. Not only that, sometimes it is also important to inform them what you are going to teach in the next week or next lecture, so that they have some mindset what they will learn after this. And then, Effective discipline skills. A great teacher has effective discipline skills and can promote positive behaviors and change in the classroom. So this is something like, if you have that skill, you can control the class. You do not want like those teachers, like when you talk or when you give lecture, some other students in the back, they are talking and they are not paying attention. So you have to control that one. At the beginning, you will say something, what is the rules of your class? Here, if you become kind, you cannot control the class. Okay? You have to be strict in that point. Like, for example, for my own classes, I always maintain that, uh, like, do not play with your cell phone. So do not open your smartphone during the lecture. Many students try to play games or you know, the things with their smartphone. But, you cannot open your smartphone. Do not talk with your partners. If you cannot understand him, ask me. Okay? So like this, you have to have some certain rules to keep them in a, some kind of boundary of discipline. Otherwise, it is very difficult. You will just talk. Some students will sleep in front of you. Some will just talk with his friends. Some will just play with his smartphone. So you have to be very specific at the beginning of the course or semester. What is the rules and regulations during your lecture? So this is very important to manage the class or discipline the class. Yeah, this is also one tip for doing that. Like while you're talking or is uh, giving lecture, try to move. Do not 
not stand in the one place. Like when I used to teach, I always walk and I walk to the aisle of the classroom. So if I go to the back of the classroom, some like uneducated students, they also become educated. So this is very much good tips how to motivate them. Because normally those who see in the front, they are very serious. Okay, traditionally, <laughs> the backbenchers are not so serious. So if you walk through them, they will be paying attention, especially at the middle of the lectures, they will be more attentive. So this is one good example of how to motivate them or how to move during the lecture. And you have to have high expectations. Forget about where I'm working, but your job is to motivate them. Motivate your subject, motivate your um, like your expectations or goal of your what you want to achieve. So try to give them homework, home assignment, and not only that, do something in the during the class part of the entire life. That is not homework, class work. Like you will give some, for example, doing one uh, problem solve uh, or do some uh, like uh, discussion. So these are the help to motivate them in the class. At the same time, they will level up themselves. Okay. Only one way, and this is the way to judge them so that they can uh, take in from you or not. So this is very important. And knowledge of curriculum and standards. Every university in the world they has their own curriculum. They have their own goals. And they have their own standards. Like UC Berkeley has their own standards. They want to achieve that level. So you have to have that knowledge before you making the syllabus or curriculum. Okay. So and try to maintain that standard. Okay. You cannot lower the standard or even you cannot just make some very high level so that the students cannot fail. So this is very important to make your curriculum as syllabus according to the curriculum. And of course, this is the always main uh, thing to have the enough knowledge okay, about the subject matter of this topic. So, you will find many of the students will be motivated by your lecture. For example, for my case, I'm civil engineer, but I choose my major in environmental engineering when I was an undergrad student. So one of my professors in environmental engineering he gave some very good lectures about the like bioaccumulation at the time it was like uh, global warming. Okay. And those things are very much uh, po becoming popular. So after attending his lecture, I decided to go to environmental engineering in my master's or PhD. So these are the things. One people, one teacher can motivate the many students. So this is the I think one of the um, best part of the teaching. Okay. And this is very important. Like you have to praise your students. Okay. If when especially interactive lectures, if they can answer your questions, they will just use some more things. Meeting perfect and just be awesome. So this make them happy and to like they will be more attentive to the class. And respect the cultural difference. What I mean, so different countries have different um, like style of in the university level. And for example, in um, USA we just call the teacher's name, but in Japan you cannot. You have to use the Sense okay. Some in if you go to India or Bangladesh, they will never call by name, they will call Sar. So it has some difference and also the way of respect. But you have to have respect all the culture. Okay. And be careful always about the harassment, <coughs> like marriage harassment, power harassment. So you have to be careful about that. And during the lecture, you have to eat, have to be like as simple as possible, and speak slowly and clearly, so that all the students can 
get what you want to say. And when you begin a new point, use higher pitch or just to make everyone that you are going to make some new topic or new things. And lastly, it's very much important the body language. Yeah. So what will be the body language during the lecture? Like what will be your posture? So if your posture is not good, it means something like you are not confident or something like that. So it is very important. So the first impression when the students saw, see you in the classroom and what is your condition like when you talk with them, uh, like what is that could be that your head motion or facial expression, eye contact, gesture. So these are the things that makes you more attractive or attentive to the students. So, and finally, some of the tips like, if possible, try to remember the names of the students and when it is interactive lectures, try to use by name. Okay, if you ask question, you can you say like this. So, in my life, I can remember all the names of the students, even the Japanese students, their names, name is very difficult, but I could remember them and ask them any questions or any discussion by their name. So this is try to do that. And what I mean by interactive lecture, topic at the beginning, topic of the next lecture, and use the blackboard, the uh, like whiteboard. And yeah, the most important thing, you have to have a smiling face, okay? So everybody likes smiles. So students will be more uh, accommodated or they can come more close to you if you smile during your lecture and your like, combination of kindness <coughs> and uh, strictness. So that is the most important. That's all from me. Thank you so much. So hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you also for your insights. That made me think a little bit more for our presentation. And so I'm here uh, to talk a little bit about teaching online. I'm Karen Grêmio, I'm from Brazil. I have been working for 12 years with online education. It's a challenge. And I work in two, two institutions. The first one is 100% online. And the other one is a Catholic university, a traditional university. And we are trying to blend, trying to engage, trying. And we're trying to get as well we here, and we are also trying. Um, I was, uh, my, um, I am a face-to-face -face teacher, but uh, I have to admit that I'm so used to online education. I really love what I do. I work, my work is hard because um, I work with develop, developing material, with instructions that develop, develop material. I work also with instructors that are teaching, and I also work with, with students. So I can face all the challenges that we have. And it's not easy, because sometimes you face problems like instructors. No, this is the way I have been teaching for 20 years. And I want to do this. And you say, well, let's go this way. So it's not easy, but I really like what I do. Uh, the first thing we have to think is we have our students now. Uh, now they grown up with a little bit with traditional education. But I would say that in five years, maybe less than this, our students will be from a generation that grown up with tablets, smartphones, how we're going to engage. How? We can engage those students. How? How are we going to deal with this? They start to be like, I always say that sometimes it seems to be ants in their seats. They start like this. So how are we going to do this? Um, so the environment is different right now. And even if you say, no, I don't like this, okay, I'm not lying. But can 
because you have to think how you're going to teach. Because it's different. You know, the students are different. <coughs> Learning is different. We are different. The environment is different. So, the top qualities that the students told us in how to use but in a different way. It's the same, but a little bit different. I contact. How? How are we going to manage to look and to see, to feel how the students are trying to tell us? Sometimes you send an, an email and the answer is like this. So how we are going to deal with this communication? It's very, very important in the process. Um, so I'm sure that online education can be the way. Um, but what is this? What is this online education? Oh, the students will be far from and here. Uh, I just grab all my content that I have been working for 20 years uploading the course or some virtual environment. And then sometimes in this traditional Catholic university that I work, the instructor is invited and say, no, don't worry. I have all the content you need. Don't worry. Tomorrow I send you. And then yesterday I got an email and the instructor said, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that would be easy. No, because you have, you have to plan. If for a traditional class you have to plan in distance online education, you have to plan, plan, plan again. Because it takes too long. So, some, something that you have to think when you think about online education. Internet classes. In our country, we have this problem. We have to face this. We have in the middle of the jungle, we have students from a university. Sometimes they, they have to travel like three hours by boat to reach, to reach the room that they're going to have the class. So we have internet classes. We have some approaches from online education. Sometimes the instructor is in the classroom. And students are, we are together, but online learning is, is present, it's a blended learning. How Azusa was telling about the to engage videos, um, forums. So I think this is a, the best of the, the best of the two worlds. Anyway, we have this. But we have the real distance learning that we are from. For example, we are in South of Brazil. Teaching from the South of Brazil, we have students all over the country. Yesterday, I was teaching from here. They are there. It was funny because it was, uh, uh, of course, a winter jacket. And then my students said, oh, teacher, you look like an European in this, those clothes. I said, oh, because in Brazil it's summertime right now. And I forgot because I just arrived and I forgot to change my clothes. And I said, wow, South Brazil is it's, warmer, it's, it's colder than in the north of Brazil. So, again, I have been working from here in the last eight months. And some students, they don't want to come here. So, this, those are some challenges that we have to, to face. But I, I would say that um, if I work as a traditional teacher, I won't be here. Because I, have to, because I, I work for a um, private university, and sometimes they don't allow you to come as a business school. Then, so I, I'm working from here. So, one of the interesting approach of online education is the blended learning. If you can, if you have this possibility, for example, if your institution is planning to start programs in online education, I think online, the blended learning is the first step you can have. For example, in our Catholic University, we have once a month 
a meeting, go out together in the same class, the instructor takes five hours, explain everything, and then you have five weeks through the intern. And then another, um, uh, next month, more five hours, then the instructor calls the, the, the contents or everything. But of course, in between, we have to strong, a nice, plan activities, readings, everything should be planned. Uh, some, in some places they also call hybrid learning. Uh, and again, I think that the key for online, uh, one of the key for online education is you have to understand what you want. You have to understand who will be your student. Because then you can plan what you're going to teach and how. If it's the blend of learning, or if it's uh, the distance learning. So then you can understand why you want. Um, and then you have the distance learning. The students, as I told, your distance. There is no in-person interaction at all. But then you can have uh, uh, some Skype conversation. There are some uh, in, in the virtual environment, there is some tool that you can join all the students at the same time. They can talk. And you can have also these synchronous and synchronous activities. But again, everything must be planned. If you just say, oh, I want to start an online education and you don't plan, then you have problems. A lot of problems. Because you have to face many challenges. First, you think about instruction. Instruction, maybe they don't want to. But sometimes the dean say, no, it's better if you teach online. Or sometimes institutions are hiring just online. Then. Say no, yes, no. Being an online teacher. So now we have a very nice lecture with Azus that told us how to be a nice, a good teacher. All of the, the types, the six uh, characters we have here. Okay. Um, the interaction with the content and the interpersonal, interpersonal interaction. The second one is, I think it's the challenge we face every day, because we don't have eye contact, we, have, we don't have body language. We don't have. Both, both uh, types are critical, but an online interaction is a little bit and we have to say. So now that you know what is online education, you want to, and your dean asks you, well, what about teaching online? <laughs> I put this, this little picture, I'm going to tell the story. Um, in 2008, um, one of my best friends, we finished PhD together, and she just called, oh, Connie, you know, Someone asked me to replace her in a class. Can you join me? I said, well, okay, okay. Oh, don't worry. I, is that a new way of teaching? I don't know the details, but I'm going to tell you. Okay, let's go. Always, professor, to, to help another one of you. Always, together. So, we are joining, she told me, well, it's kind of a distance learning. And when we arrive there, we are going more details. Okay. When we arrive there, there is a studio, a TV studio. <laughs> say, wow. I say, well, then his friend said to me, oh, don't worry, I'm going to teach. You're just going to sit there through the computer, and the students are going to send you some questions, and then you tell me the questions, and I answer. I say, wow, okay. And then all the lights, microphones, and one, two, three, and computers, one. Started class. We are in South of Brazil, and there are students all over the country. 
And so my friend starts preaching and saying, but you know, we thought that some was something that was missing. The students, of course, we didn't know that. Then she turned to face the blackboard. It's not the black anymore, it's white. Anyway, she turned and she whispered for herself, Oh God, what am I doing here? And she forgot that there was a microphone attached to her. <laughs> and so, was broadcast from out of the country. <laughs> and then, it was very nice, very nice experience. I, I have to tell you because it was like the, the break, the, the, the break of ice. Because I was sitting in the computer like blah blah blah, blah. and the students say, "No, teacher, you are okay. Go on, come on, we are here." But, but, but let's see. <laughs> when she faced, and then the guys from the studio, and then there's nothing to say. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you, sorry, this is the first time. Then she told, this is the first time here. And so it was 12 years ago. At that time, the institution was live classes, so we broadcast for all the country. Now we changed it a lot, because it had a lot of mistakes like this. And anyway, so, man, you have to face these challenges. You have. There's no way. Oh, now my institution, we need to put in a teleprompter. You know the teleprompter in front of the camera, so we write, and now you, when you wrote here, so but you can you have to read, but we can for the student they can feel that you are not reading, you are reading, so it's difficult because you have to read, but it's not at all. It's uh, what uh, I say, just uh, that you have to love, you must want to learn, learn. And I will say that in distance online, you, you won't have Alzheimer because your brain is like this every day. So, if you decide to work as an instruction online, teaching or online education, we have we have some kinds of we can develop content, you can teach, and you can do both. And if you are the leader of a team, these are things that you have to pay attention. Because sometimes you have a person who's very good in writing the content. But when you go through teaching online, it's a disaster. Because he or she does not have the abilities to manage. Because it's the, the dynamics are very different. So if you can, try to develop one. But if the instructor can develop and teach, this is good work. But sometimes, don't push too much. Because this person says, no, I don't want. You say, no, maybe you can. No. Of course, if the, the person says, well, I want to try, then go ahead. But you can do this. Because you have some kind of thing because let's say, oh, let's do this. Oh, I have a, also a story that we have a very nice instructor. He's a guy, he, he, he stayed here in my board, I think. And he, oh my, I, I used to teach in online education in Miami when I was there. And he tried to, to do something and say, well, this is new, maybe it's not going to work. I said, no, no. I know it worked a lot. And then you start to say, oh, let's see what's going, if it's work or not. No, no, I want, I want, I want to say, okay. Well, go like this. So some forum, forums, and you start to put in some sentence and the students to reply or think about that. But of course, it was like everybody put in the same time. So sometimes things that you think is easy when you put it online. And the only problem is that when you have your like hundred students, maybe you can at least try to to manage the problems. But you have like ten thousand students. When I teach teach education, you have more than ten thousand students. If I made a I can a mistake, can you imagine how many messages we get in back? <laughs> 
So everything in business part is huge. Sometimes professor are instructed to put something there and in the, the forum and say, oh, let's talk about this. We have a, a program that is from a public, uh, uh, but it's like a, a social, social uh, interaction. And when you put some subject that is, can be very polemic, then you have to assess the virtual environment like two, three times a day. Because sometimes if you write something and you disagree, they start like typing. And then when you open your virtual environment, it's full of everything they can do anymore. So sometimes you, you have to uh, get slow. Um, the home. I think the, the rules are the same for the traditional content that you write. Uh, but you have to think a lot what you really want. We have the tools, we have forums, we have everything, but you have is this tool the best one for this activity or for that activity? Sometimes no. Sometimes if you put an app, for example, an essay, it's better than a forum. You have to, to think. So what I tell to my this person I use, uh, I work, is I like to make a cake. You have the tools, you have the ingredients, just see how we are going to mix. You have, you, you, because there you cannot go, you know, because you, you don't have, like you can't say to my student, oh, take this essay and read for me, or read this part of the book. No, you do not have But you have some tools that you, you can use, you can mix. So, if you're, if you're planning your course, you can have readings, Again, just don't put just like, oh, read this. No, it's not going to work. The language used is very important because you don't have you don't have the eye contact, you don't have the body language. You have to lead your student to read what you really want to, or how it's important for him or for her to, to make that exercise. So, you can have some readings. You can have wikis, you can have writings, blogs, discussion forums. So these are some of the tools you can have. Depends on the virtual environment. The first is I use Blackboard and Moodle, both in my two institutions. You have the course. So you have to understand. I think you have to understand and know your virtual environment. First of all, understand what tools you have to you can available for you to put. First, attention to the environment is not it, it is not the environment of face-to-face -face class. Keep it in mind. And it's more important is when you are hired, if you're lead, if you're going to be the leader of a group, all these structures should be uh, committed to the online education. They, they, they have to know that environment's not the same. So, you need a dialogue language. It's the way you're trying to, to expose your emotion, your feelings. For example, when I'm grading my students, I, 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 I like to use yellow. And the first one I put the yellow, um, someone said, oh, you are angry or you are, and then, but yellow is my favorite color. I love sunflower. And then I said, well, now I write a little letter and say, oh, hi, how are you? Um, you're going to see that I have a lot of yellow, I am going to put a lot of yellow marks in your essay. But it's, yellow for me is a wonderful color. Sunflower and the flower from the 
that can make me show my feelings for you that I like. And then you know that now when I appear, when we are going to have some content and some, uh, some interaction online, say, oh, you are the sunflower instruction. I say, yes, I'm the sunflower instruction. Because you try to, to you know, the way I, I try to, to make me feel or expose them that I, I like them, uh, I care. I care. At least when Brazil, when we are teaching, we have this Catholic university in the south. It's a middle class students. But in the other institution, when you take people from the middle of the jungle, and sometimes you take a, an essay, a paper, it was terrible. Terrible. Was, oh my God, what am I going to do? Then it, when it comes and a Skype interaction, it's like a 60 years old lady that have been working with children for 25 years in the school, helping to clean, help to cook. And she thinks that she can do something different for those children. But no, I know that my 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 essay is not my, my paper is not good, but you know, I write everything in my notebook and once a week. I can have one hour to type in the computer from the school. That's the reason I can't type too much. And I say, oh my gosh, <laughs> your paper is great. You know, so sometimes I feel like, you know, you stay like, oh, this is, ah, and I want to stop the person saying. So in this institution, I, I feel that I make some difference. You know, when I teach, when I give it back, it's something that you, and in Brazil it's huge, so we, they need us. And then, another thing when you take talking about uh, content, um, coherence, and coherence and cohesion, the link between the ideas. Because sometimes you put a reading here, then a writing here, then a formula. No, it comes to be. Now speaking about an organization, of course. And I would think, now we have the structure, you have the content, you have the students, you have the virtual environment. That's all? No. Just be. I've been working for three months, but now we work too. So we love, if you for, to, to be a teacher, you need to love for online education, love and love and love. Because then you have here. Here we need to be, to, to have interaction. This is one of the problems we have. The structure thing, oh, it's done. No. If you don't show up in your class, in your physical, in your classroom, what is the student going to do? Look at this. Okay. So this is the this is the now we need to do this. So you also need a logical manager, technical, and social. <coughs> social now is very, very important. This one. Teacher presence. You need to show that you are present in the virtual environment. Sometimes for that instruction, oh, I log in, but there's no questions. And I say, well, show that you are interested in trying to understand why they don't need questions or that they, they don't have questions for you. So stay close while away. This is something that you really need to, to interact with your students. A virtual, uh, a virtual presence. And here, those are challenges that you should pay attention when you want to plan a program, an online program. Methodology, balance. This is the problem because sometimes they don't. They, then, they don't know how many times they need to do things. So this is important. You have to teach our students how to balance. And understand your online students. 